I've been wearing these shirts for for uh, many years, ever since the school's been open, I think. And I've only seen one person have an I Buy Houses shirt. That's Charlie. Charlie. He had this orange shirt. I thought it was ugly, but at least it said, I buy houses. Do you realize that a $16 t-shirt, this particular $16 t-shirt, I've made $90,000 off of 425 South Warminster Road last year, late last year. Uh, these silly things work. I sold him my I Buy Houses car. Eric now drives my Beamer. Uh, but I, it was time to get rid of that car. So you got a question? <clears throat> you need a mic. I would buy one and wear one, but it doesn't have Larry and you on it. You can out. put Larry and you on the, any picture you want. All right. Yeah, and we can talk about Chippendales all night if you want. I don't care. I, I think we should actually consider that idea at one of these points. <laughs> I wrote the date down. Okay, so here we go. I want to talk about one of my favorite types of real estate investing. Vacation rentals. I love them. I absolutely love them. I can't get enough of them. And... um what do I love about them the most? I spent most of my career investing in Philadelphia. I started in this business in 1989. So I've been in this business for 33 years now. And getting, you know, collecting the rent in Philadelphia has been a very difficult problem over the years. Not with everybody, but with plenty of people. And I really got fed up with it. I love the fact that with a vacation rental, somebody is paying me six months before they come to my house sometimes, right? <laughs> How awesome is that? Uh, it's great. So if you own a vacation rental, you can advertise that on various different sites, okay? We're going to talk about those sites. So first of all, the best way to do it is to buy the vacation rental if you can. If you can, but you do not have to buy it, okay? You can still control it by renting the property. You, if you don't have the money to buy it, you could say to the landlord, hey, would you rent me this property and maybe lock them into some kind of long-term lease? where you can control the property for three years. Now, all you got to do is go out and buy some furniture, buy some cool pictures for the wall, decorate the place. If you've got decorating skills, okay? I don't know, anybody here have decorating skills? Okay, my wife watches HGTV like 12 hours a day. So, you know, she'll say to me, this house doesn't look that good. I said, well, what are you telling me for? Like, uh, you know, we'll just we go out and we look for cool things. She's got me doing it, right? So who knows? I might like the Chippendales eventually, right? She's got me doing it, going out looking for antiques, cool-looking things, you know? And, and if, it's, if it's weird and crazy and cool-looking, I'll buy it. I bought a wooden crocodile that was um, uh, like a coffee table, Right? And I thought, she's going to kill me when I bring this thing home. But it actually fit perfectly right in one of the tiny houses. Okay, so you do not have to buy vacation rentals. You can just be clever. Frankly, you don't have to buy anything in the real estate business, really. If you drive by someone's property and it says for rent, you should call that number. And, and if it's... Um, I mean, if it's in Florida or if it's down the shore or something, it's an obvious vacation rental, right? And you're probably not going to be able to control that property because most people who live in vacation rental areas know the value that they can get for a vacation rental. However, it's still worth trying. If I drove by a, a house and it was a quad, for example, and it had a for rent sign, I'd call the sign. Because maybe I can control just one apartment of that quad. 
Maybe I can do that. I would negotiate the price down, and then I would rent the property for more if I could. And, and even if I was only making 100 bucks a month, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you make the phone call? Yes? Into how would you get into a contract with that owner of the property? And then would, if they find out that now you are leasing it to somebody else? I would just I would just tell him that I plan to do that. Oh, okay. So right? you would tell him up front that that's he, what you're he's doing. most he's a landlord, he's a professional landlord, he wants somebody to pay the rent, right? Right. So I would negotiate with him to get the cheapest price I can. I say he signs a three year deal with me. Now I control one of his units in that quad, just one, but I control it, it's mine, right? I could turn around and run it to Lucas for 300 bucks more. Right. Even if it was 100 bucks more, wouldn't you do it? Yeah. In, 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 in a scenario that I'm talking about where it would be a quad and it's not really in a vacation rental area, I don't have to furnish the unit for Lucas. I just let him move into it. And even if I made 100 bucks a month, who cares? I'll take 1,200 bucks for three years, I'll take that. But I'm saying you're making a you're make signing a um a, an agreement. I'm right? signing a rental, a rental lease, and lease. I have to pay that landlord. Right. So okay. So it's in your name. You're not gonna put it. I in. don't really put anything in my name, but yeah, I would probably just create a trust or something. I don't know. Okay, and that's yeah. how it'll be okay to then. Not turn really. I don't think that no. makes any difference. You oh. could put it in your name if you want to. It's not like something that requires a trust. I'm just saying that. You want to, you can lock things up. You could do a lease option with somebody. Maybe the landlord, sometimes landlords get tired of their properties. Sometimes they got to move away. One of the greatest lists you can ever buy is uh, retired landlords who live in states other than where their properties are. Those guys get fed up. Usually about takes 20 years. So if you know somebody who bought a property, let's just say you know somebody who bought a property in Northeast Philadelphia, 20 years ago and you now looked up their mailing address for the tax bill and they're in Boston there's a there's a guaranteed probably a pretty good deal there he's a retired landlord who doesn't want to mess with the property anymore he doesn't even live in the same city he lives in Boston now and he still owns the property this is a property you could probably rent from a guy pretty easy all right so you can do lease options you can rent them you can buy them uh, I've always bought them, only because I could, all right? <clears throat> but you could run into some potential issues, especially if uh, the landlord maybe finds out that uh, you're renting it for way more than he's renting it to you. He might get jealous. He might have a problem with that. But as long as you got the contracts locked up, ironclad, then you're probably not going to have a problem. There's nothing you can do about it until the term expires, whenever that may be, right? Okay. So I have all different kinds of vacation rentals. That last picture that I showed you right here, this is a, a property right on the beach. Uh, it's called the Windsong Beach House. And uh, <clears throat> this property has a pool. The pool is nowhere near as big as this picture makes it look. But I have an amazing photographer who just makes, he makes everything look so good. My business partner sent him from Sarasota, Florida to Colorado just to take pictures of a mobile home park because this is what he does. His pictures are awesome, right? In this picture, he was inside the swimming pool with his camera. He's got this special camera. When he pushes a button, the camera takes 12 pictures instantly at 12 different exposures. And what he does with this is he then takes the pictures on his computer and he can box out like the windows inside the units, right? And he can choose the highest contrast on and choose out of any one of the 12 pictures contrast that he wants. So he can box out the windows and then say, make these the highest contrast. So what happens is when you look at the picture, it looks like the sun shines through every window in the house, right? Amazing pictures. Uh, maybe some of them will be here I could show you. Uh, so these, a lot of you know about my tiny house park. These are all vacation rentals. So people are paying like 230 bucks a night 
to rent these tiny houses. And I mean, for me personally, I mean, I'm half owner of the park. I have spent one night in a tiny house. One night. I decorated a lot of them. I, I fixed them. I looked for cool stuff to put in the tiny houses. Uh, lots of little gadgets and things like that. Shopping for beach chairs and beach towels. And imagine, like, if you're going to do a vacation rental, there's definitely some hard work for you. Because you have to stock this house with everything it needs. And I mean everything. You have to think like it's your house and like, what do we need? And you have to buy all these silly things. A lot of it I get from Home Goods. So we, we've gone into Home Goods with three shopping carts and left spending like, you know, whatever it was, $2,000 to, to fill all the stuff that houses need. You need cool looking artwork. And you can't have the photographer come until you've decked the place out and made it look really cool. I used to buy, in Florida, there's a lot of places. You go to Habitat for Humanity and buy furniture. You can go to Goodwill. You can go to all these places that they have a lot of rich people down there that just donate their furniture. But, uh, like, but the margins are really tough. Like Habitat for Humanity, like they take 10% off and then they got it for free and then they take 10% off and you got to buy it. And I, I did do that for years. But then I finally came to the conclusion that it's better to just buy brand new furniture because it looks awesome. And there's a place called Furniture Warehouse in uh, Florida that we use now. And when I walk in there, uh, there's a girl there who just absolutely loves me. Oh, she just comes running over to me. Because we're usually spending like five grand, ten grand on furniture, depending on... At, w at one point, I had 42 vacation rentals in Florida, so I spent a lot of money over there on this kind of stuff. Not necessarily in the um, tiny houses. They're a lot easier. Like, they got lofts up top, and we would just buy mattresses and throw the mattresses on the floor because there's no room in these lofts. Like, you, when you're sleeping, you're laying on a mattress that's on a floor, right? Like an engineered floor. Um, you, you know what I mean by that, right? So when you wake up in the morning, if you try to stand up, you might hit your head, depending on how tall you are, you might hit your head on the ceiling of the house, right? But uh, these lofts are usually in the front and in the back, and you're elevated, and they're perfect for, like, kids to sleep in. And they usually have, like, a bedroom downstairs, but they don't all have it. They, they, these are designed all different ways. But we give them all these cool names and colors. Look at all the colors in these things, right? Like, a lot of that is, you know, important. So let's talk about the sites that you have to get acclimated with, all right? These are not that difficult. My favorite is VRBO, Vacation Rental by Owner. VRBO is awesome, okay? If you have a problem with a tenant, VRBO will back you up, all right? Let's call VRBO like the Republicans of the vacation rental business. Airbnb is definitely the Democrats, okay? I've had Airbnb people call up Airbnb, who already paid me. They already paid me my money and booked my property. And the Airbnb person told me they're giving that person back the money. I, I freaking hate those people. All right? Really? VRB will not do that to you. So when I list my properties for rent on Vacation Rental by Owner, and I do use Airbnb, all right? And there's actually a way where you can link the calendars between your VRBO property and your Airbnb property. And that's really important. Calendars are a big thing. If you double book someone's vacation, man, you got a problem, all right? That's like really stressful, really difficult stuff. I've gotten phone calls like on my daughter's birthday, like trying to solve some double booking that happened, right? So l learning how to link these calendars from one software to another is really critical. And that can be very stressful when that goes wrong. TripAdvisor is another one. Booking.com, you can only use them if you have an on-site manager. And then there's always people calling me up with the new flavor of the month. Florida vacation rental owners or whatever, all these different sites. I don't really bother with the flavor of the month. 
It's not worth it. it, it it's enough stress just managing VRBO, Airbnb, okay? So that's good enough. And in the beginning, if you just want to do one, I totally get it, right? I would say okay. do VRBO because they back you up. My VRBO vacation rentals, when I managed them, had an absolute 100% no refund policy. All I have to sell you is dates. You buy them, that's it. I can't refund you any money. Zero refunds, okay? And people will try everything you can think of. Uh, my father just got ill and, or somebody just died. And I say, I'm sorry, I work for a corporation, which is true because it's an LLC, right? I work for a corporation and I'm not allowed to refund. Absolutely, 100%, I cannot refund you. Airbnb still did it to me a couple of times. But VRBO never did. They always stand behind you. They're good people. So I recommend them highly. Okay. So um, these sites, you, you have to become familiar with them. Once you learn VRBO, Airbnb, that's good enough. If you're, if you're just getting into the business and you only got one property, you can even start with one site. Okay. This is just a picture of the website from, uh, from the tiny house park. Every one of these things is a vacation rental, right? People can book them for one night. They can book them for two weeks. They could stay there for three months, but it'd be pretty damn expensive. Right across the street is a hotel. It's a uh, Best Western right across the street. And if any of you have ever heard the story about how I found this tiny house park, I was looking for Best Western where my mother-in-law had a very romantic weekend at. And she's like, Phil, can you take me to the Best Western that she had a romantic weekend with her husband back in the 80s. And I'm like, there are no more uh, Best Westerns. I took you to all of them. And every one of them, she said, it wasn't the right one. But whatever. But <laughs> whatever. So, um, so this is like a, a really popular place. You see it back there by the bathroom. It, it was on the front cover of Tiny Homes magazine. It's been featured in the Sarasota newspaper as a top destination place. Personally, for me, uh, I think they're cool, but I never stay there. I already have, like, real houses there that are, like, 2,500 square feet. Why would I want to stay in a tiny house? Uh, I slept one night in one of them, and I left at 6 o'clock in the morning to go get a coffee. So it's just not for me. But some of these people who go there, I mean, they love these things. They're like tree huggers, okay? They get really excited and i've been i've been there like just talking to the manager and i saw a woman come out of a tiny house once going oh my god how do i get into the other ones and i said maybe you knock on her door and ask them you know like just just ask people maybe they'll, they'll let you see your house and you see theirs that kind of thing right uh we put a ton of work into this thing making this place look cool and you don't have to get this crazy, but we had a full-time manager at this tiny house park. So, you know, he did a lot of this stuff. He did a lot of this stuff for us, a guy who worked for us for four years. And uh, he's still a good friend of mine down there. He still does some work for me. Um, so if you, ever, if you ever get to a point where you have 30 of these rentals, there's software sites that can manage... VRBO, Airbnb, Booking.com, TripAdvisor, all those. The, the, the two biggest names are Verizzi. Yeah, they're basically saying it's very easy, <laughs> right? And Kigo, those are the two big sites. We've used them both. We've had lots of problems with both. I mean, but it, it's complex because you, you, you got Airbnb, VRBO, TripAdvisor, Booking.com, and they're all working through some other program it, it, it can be crazy sometimes. It's difficult. Uh, but just to let you know, if you did ultimately get to a point where you had 30 of these things, you might need to go to a, a software like this. A lot of people take Instagram pictures, and we have the same photographer that uses that special camera I told you about, right? 
he would go to the tiny house park in the beginning when these new houses showed up. He'd take a bunch of pictures of them. He'd get pretty girls to model it, you know. And this girl was just somebody staying there. I mean, she looks great, and her dress and the colors are awesome. They really pop. This kind of stuff is the kind of stuff you got to do. You got to... You got to make it look super cool. You got to make it look like, oh, my God, I want to go there, right? I want to be there. It also happens to be uh, 0.7 miles away from the number one rated beach in the United States. So you can walk to Siesta Key Beach from this tiny house park. So uh, it's, a, it's a very valuable piece of ground to me, and I don't plan on selling it anytime soon. I thought about selling it last year, but uh, I think I made the right decision not to. So I'm keeping it. So let's keep going. So when am I paid? I'm paid way before they even get there. And what's beautiful about the vacation rental business is people are predetermined to have a good time. Plus, there's a lot of bars in this town, and that helps too, okay? Uh, they're on vacation, they're in our, their happy place. A lot of people call Siesta Key their happy place. If you've never been there, you should get your butt there and check it out. The beaches are absolutely gorgeous. I can't even describe for you what it feels like to walk on the sand. It's like pure white. It's the softest stuff you've ever seen. Uh, if any of you snorted cocaine in the 1980s, Think of like you're walking on cocaine. That's what it feels like, okay? It's so soft, right? It makes you feel so good. It doesn't even get hot, right? It doesn't get hot. It doesn't get hot because it's actually crushed rocks. It's crushed quartz in a powder. You will never step on a rock on Siesta Key Beach. Never. Uh, it's just an amazing place. You have, to, you have to go there and see it to understand it, Okay. So when am I paid? I'm paid before anybody gets there. And people always worry about, well, how am I going to control a property in Siesta Key, right? Easy. The minute at 11 a.m. on the last day, the cleaner is going to be in the parking lot knocking on the door saying, it's 11 a.m., you need to leave this house, right? So the cleaner's on top of it. And... I mean, people break things, people have stolen things from me, people stole a desk from me, people did, things happen. A, a guy one time let his dog use my brand new $1,800 couch as a litter box for two weeks. <laughs> um, what are you going to do, right? I remember one time I, I got there on a Friday night with my wife, we just got off the plane, we drove to, you know, we drove uh, an hour to get to the house. We get there, there's a broken shelf in the refrigerator. She gets all upset about it. I said, just forget it. We're on vacation. I'm taking you to the bar right now. See this stupid shelf? I threw it in a trash can. I said, next week I'll go on Amazon. I'll order another one of these stupid shelves for $35 and the problem solved, right? Or I'll get somebody who works for me to do it, right? You can't let that stuff bother you. You have to just... When you own a bunch of rental properties, you can't be driving by it going, oh, what, I wonder what's going on in there and everything. You just got to, like, free your mind and say, forget that, right? One of the greatest things about vacation rentals is you get to use them, right? And if you love Siesta Key or you love Colorado or you love California, God forbid, um, you could go there for free anytime you want, all right? I have multiple places that I can go to in Sarasota right now, okay? Multiple places. So it's awesome. It's like I could bring my whole family down there if I want to. I don't always want to. <laughs> but it's nice to know that you can, all right? I took my, my mother there. I took my father there. I used for years when my father was healthier. He's 85 now. He's not doing well. But when my father was healthier... Every grapefruit season, we go watch the Phillies play the Orioles, the stadiums right in Sarasota. We go watch the Yankees play the Phillies. I mean, it's awesome stuff. Great memories that I've had with my family doing it. You can run this business 
from anywhere. Let's say you got a house in Philadelphia. Um, I don't know, it's in South Philly, and, and your tenants move out. Okay, so now you as the landlord, you probably got to get your butt down there or get somebody to go down there and fix that property up so you can rent it out again. You're probably not going to move your family into that rental for a weekend to go enjoy yourself. But in this business, vacation rentals make your life better, okay? This is not something I even view as a whole lot of work because uh, booking it, someone has to do the bookings. Someone has to be on top of the software. I did it with my wife for years. And there were some tough times, man, when we, we were having a birthday party for my daughter once and, and all hell broke loose that night. That was a bad night, okay? And a lot of stress and stuff like that. It's, nothing's easy in this world and it's never going to be super easy. But, but this business can be run from anywhere. And especially, you have to go down... If you're going to have vacation rentals in Siesta Key, for example, you must go there. You must become affluent with everything that goes on there because people are going to ask you a million questions. The stupidest question that they ask you all the time is, like a parakeet, Meh? how far is it from the beach? Meh? How far is it from the beach? One of my houses on VRBO is called 60 Steps to Sand. And they would still say, how far is it from the beach? I'm like, ah! Really? 60 steps. You know, come on. Come on, people. Pay attention, right? The cash flow rocks. It's great cash flow. Jersey Shore is getting $6,000 a week. Okay? Now, I think a big part of the Jersey Shore, they get six grand a week because they only got 10 weeks a year to rent. Florida, I got all year. Okay, let me tell you how I break it down. First trimester, January to April, you kick butt. You're going to make a lot of money during that time frame. In the first trimester, you're going to make real money. The second trimester, first of all, you're getting all the snowbirds in the first trimester. You're getting people coming, they're just dying to get out of the cold weather. They want to run to Florida, even more than ever now, uh, with all these crazy-ass uh, rules in New York City, San Francisco, L.A. Those cities are losing people like crazy. And it's about time. So the cash flow rocks. I mean, you're going to have huge demand in Florida in the first trimester. Huge demand. In the second trimester, what you get is Floridians. Floridians go to other cities in Florida. Guess what? It's hot as hell. Their kids are home from school. They don't, this is, we're now talking summertime, right? What do they want to do? They want to go somewhere with their kids. So they might live in Tampa, they go to Siesta Key. They might live in Miami, they go to Tampa. They just, they just crisscross all over the state. It's two and a half hours you drive from one end of the state to the other. Not if you're going up to the panhandle, that's much further, right? But most of the time, if you're just crossing the state, it's no big deal. I can get from Sarasota to Miami in a little over three hours, right? And people do it all the time. You can just, you can just if you're in Tampa, you can go to Disney, no problem. You could go to St. Augustine. You can go to Daytona, drive your car on the beach. It's a, it's a great state, okay? So the cash flow rocks. And it comes with a bunch of wonderful benefits. All right, let's keep going. All right, so uh, this is just a chart that I put up often about properties to show you all the things that you get with a property, right? The base is security. Every family wants to have a house. You want to have security, know that you got a roof over your head, and maybe even have some other investment properties, right? But when they're vacation rentals, the big benefit is you get to use it, and you want to use it. Don't buy properties in places you don't like. Buy properties in places you love. In fact, I bought a bunch of them in Sarasota, but in hindsight, what I should have done 
was buy some in Sedona, buy some all over the country. Now you can have some really cool, it's a lot harder to manage it because now you need maintenance people in every one of these cities, but that's a lot trickier. But you can also get to use your houses all over the country. All right? So, Kimma. All right. So, I've already told you some, you know, I'm not happy with Airbnb. They have, they have burned me more than once. If, if someone calls up Airbnb and tells them a story, uh, the bleeding hearts will just refund the money. And sometimes like a week before they're coming, you know. And I'll tell you what it is, most cases, the weather. I can't control the weather. If it's going to rain the week they're coming, all of a sudden there's some kind of problem. Oh, my dad is sick. My mom is sick. My car broke down. My house burned down. I'm sorry. I work for a corporation. We have a 100% no refund policy. And that's the way we do it. Airbnb, they do what they want. And uh, there's a way to fix that. Don't use them. But they are a very successful company. It's going to make money for you. So you got you to gotta weigh the pros and cons, okay? Credit card disputes. People do book the vacation rentals with credit cards. And they can dispute the credit card and say that this house wasn't what it was. So these things happen sometimes. Sometimes. Refunds, I already told you, we don't do it, okay? Now, VRBO offers insurance. So you could, ins a, a client can, this is offered by VRBO, not by me personally. But when you're booking a vacation rental for, through VRBO, VRBO will sell you insurance. So if the weather is bad or for any reason that you have, I still get paid, right? And they get a refund if they buy the insurance. And we've even thought about self-insuring vacation rentals, right? So that's another option. You could do that yourself. You could offer that yourself and possibly make that money. Um, so what else is going on in vacation rentals? There are bank loan issues. There are 6,000 vacation rentals in Siesta Key. This is a little island. 6,000 vacation rentals. Guess what? Nobody will finance a vacation rental. What freaking sense does that make? I have no idea. I, I frankly just can't wrap my head around that. Like, wait a minute. I sh if I took this very house right here, I could probably... This is a, a house that we bought to flip. We bought it, we fixed it up, we flipped it. Then I decided I wanted to live in it. Then my wife decided I don't want to live in it. <laughs> okay? So this house, uh, I still own it. We're renting it out. It's a four-bedroom vacation rental with a ping-pong table, large screen TVs, a 960-square-foot living room. It's a cool house. I like it. I'd be happy living there. You know, my wife isn't happy with it. She wants a better house than this. She wants something better than this. She wants it with a pool. She doesn't want to see a garage at the front of the house. And I'm cool with that. She can get what she wants. Yes? Bill, how much can you rent that for? Like, um, what are you... Are you I haven't for? managed these properties okay, for like yeah. three years. I don't remember. Uh, I, I don't know what the numbers are. I could look it up and tell you. But yeah, I, but I, I'm, I mean, I would think for a four-bedroom, you'd be getting... There are no four-bedrooms in Sarasota. Uh, but this house also doesn't have a pool. So okay. if you had a pool, pools are really hard to come by these days. I was just talking about it on, uh, on Monday because um, there's so much building going on in Florida right now. They're building everywhere, right? Yeah. And the swimming pool guys are making mega bucks. And the going price of a swimming pool in Florida these days is seventy five dollars to $100,000. Yeah, if you can even get a guy to show up. And all the big companies, understand, every big builder in the country is down there right now building 50, 100 houses. Uh, some of these cities are, their cities popping out of the ground, okay? 
on on the west coast of Florida like I've never seen. So there's a lot of crazy stuff going on down there. Another thing that's going on down there is the hotel industry is doing everything they can to kill vacation rentals. They are bribing politicians. They are doing everything that they can to get politicians to make vacation rentals illegal. But I frankly don't think it's going to work because there's 12% of the rent that you bring in from a vacation rental has to be paid to Florida State and to the county. So they're making big bucks off of it. So I don't think it's, it's going to work. But there are also local groups down there. Uh, they got this thing called the Drum Circle. And if you've ever been there, uh, I call it Freak Show Central. Uh, people with hula hoops, um, uh, political signs of everything you can think of. Um, they have this, they, they have this giant drum circle where people just bring these big drums and they're all just drumming themselves and everyone's dancing. It's, it's, it's fun. It's like, uh, it's, they do it every Sunday night at sunset. And it's pretty damn fun to be there. I recommend, uh, bring some booze cause you're going to need, you're going to need to soak some of this up. But people dress in crazy outfits, like jester outfits with bells on his head and dance around. People bring swords and like they're, it's crazy stuff. You got, you got to see it to believe it. But, um, a lot of those people are the, are the, uh, local groups that get together and protest. I don't even know what they're protesting half the time. Yeah, you just go there for fun and. It's, it's just something fun. You got to go there at least once and see it. Sunsets are gorgeous there because on the West Coast, obviously, you're looking at the Gulf of Mexico, which is 500 miles deep. So the sunsets are amazing. A lot of people just go to the drum circle just to hang out and watch the freaks and, uh, and have a few cocktails. You can buy cocktails on Siesta Key Beach. You could buy a Stella on Siesta Key Beach and walk on the beach with it. I once saw a guy land a seaplane in the Gulf of Mexico, drop an anchor, walk up, got a Stella, and came back, <laughs> right? Uh, he's, he was cool. Uh, this is an example of uh, just a cheap website that I had back in the day when I was managing the vacation rentals. We had 3,840 views in one week, just to show you the popularity down there, okay? You need a hook with your vacation rental, something that people care about, something that people want to go to your area, okay? And having the number one rated beach in the United States ain't a bad one, ain't a bad hook. It gets people there, okay? So you just have to be careful about where you're going to buy one of these things and if you're going to buy one of these things. Number one rated beach in the United States, okay? It's not the number one rated beach in the United States every year, but it the, there's two organizations that do this. A guy who calls himself Dr. Beach, and the other person is Travel Magazine who does it. And they usually rotate between St. Petersburg, um, Siesta Key will win it, and then they go back to uh, another beach. They mix it up a little bit between about five or six beaches. Clearwater Beach wins it. I think Clearwater Beach stinks. You walk on that uh, beach and you're stepping on stones and shells and all kinds of stuff. So I don't like it. But anyway, um, better than California beaches, better than Hawaii beaches. California and Hawaii beaches could have been on this list. They have never won ever since I've been going to Siesta Key. They've never won. The age of the people in Florida. So there are lots of places where you have a lot of seniors. But they tend to live in senior developments. And what's cool about Siesta Key is it's a young town. It's a, a 35 to 55 town, maybe. That's probably about the age range. A lot of people just hitting the bars, going to the restaurants. You know, the attitude of the town is very welcoming. Uh, if you've ever been to Naples, Naples has a 27-foot high wall. You can't even see the damn beach. 
when you're on Beach Road. You can't even see it. And the beach, by the way, is about from here to Ken. That's the length of the whole beach, right? It, it stinks, okay? And when they put up a 27-foot high wall, what are they telling me? They're telling me to get the hell out of here, right? See, it's the key. is a 5,000-car parking lot. They're telling me, Phil, come here. Yes. I feel welcome in Siesta Key, and I will never go to Naples. And last time I went to Naples, I'm in a diner, and Johnny Bench is sitting right where you are. Yeah, his face looked like a catcher's mitt. It really did. He is like, nine, he, he, when I saw him, he was like 94 or something. His face literally looked like a catcher's mitt. I still bet he could kick my ass, but yeah, his fists are like, you know, massive. Anyway, um, pet policy. Most of the vacation rentals on Siesta Key are in condos. I told you there's 6,000 vacation rentals, but very few of them are in fee simple houses, meaning you own it 100%. There are no rules for you, right? So you can do whatever you want. So we have an open door pet policy. And I tell people, I don't care if you got a horse, it's fine. Come on, come to the vacation rental, right? Um, we used to, we, I used to have a sign in one of my vacation rentals that said, your dog is welcome in my house because no dog ever got drunk and fell on my coffee table and broke it. <laughs> no dog ever beat up his wife while he was here on vacation and had the cops come to my house, right? I said, so your dog, if your dog can vouch for you, you can come to my vacation rental with your dog. That's the policy. And we never had any problem other than that $1,800 couch that got ruined. But for the most part, isn't, who cares? You throw a couch out and you get another one. All right. What else do I got here? Oh, I got some pretty girls here. Uh, people renting your home. Look, crazy stuff is going to happen. All right. Um, I had somebody form a, somebody film a porn movie in my vacation rental. I did not witness it, but my cleaner was furious, to say the least. She said there was glitter all over the place. I don't understand the glitter thing, but uh, I don't know. Whatever. Um, spring break breakers having parties. That can be a big problem for you. Luckily for me, spring breakers don't seem to go to Sarasota. They go to Panama City. That's a big spring break town. And frankly, I don't know where the hell the, the rest of them go. But uh, they don't seem to go to Siesta Key. There was a, if any of you saw the movie The Wolf of Wall Street, and they come home and there's this uh, bunch of guys naked in the apartment, okay? I got a phone call from my neighbor at the Windsong Beach House telling me that's exactly what happened at <laughs> the Windsong Beach House. What, what the hell is they going to do about it, you know? They paid. They had. I'm sure they had a good time. I don't know. I don't really want to know. But uh, these kind of things can happen. So just accept it. If you're going to be in this business, ex expect that things like this will happen to you, to your houses. And it's just the way it is. Uh, scams. There was a scam once where somebody took my photographs off of VRBO, put them on Airbnb, listed the property as theirs, and told the person who wanted to rent it that when you get to Florida, meet me at this bank, and you can pay me in cash. And a uh, poor woman got basically scammed. Uh, I had nothing to do with it. I told her my house is already rented, and uh, but it is what it is. So that happened. There's also been a, a couple of... Uh, Breaking Amish, which I'm sure you all watch. Everybody here watches Breaking Amish, right? <laughs> okay, so they rented my house for one season. One of the first houses I bought in Florida, they rented it. And uh, they basically, you know, it's just like a silly-ass uh, reality show. And uh, <clears throat> the camera guys actually did more damage to the house than the people living in it. Because if they heard there was a problem, they come racing over with their vans 
and like six guys get out with these giant cameras and uh you know so that's happened there is a tv show called siesta key if you want to learn about it you can just watch a tv show it's on mtv i'm sure all of you watch mtv angelina might watch it did you ever see that show no i well i can't even get you to talk to me you know back in the day when you came here you used to actually contribute now i get your your phone asleep with me up here? All right, Larry, do we have a hook? We can take her out of here. All right, anyone got any questions about vacation rentals? Can you grab a mic, please? Give me a one turn. Couple of questions. Uh, one, uh, what kind of occupancy rate do you have to have in order for you to be able to uh, make payments and, and, and come out ahead, number one? And then number two, uh, what about this climate change uh, thing and, and uh, how many years away are you gonna be uh, uh, Venice uh, with your properties uh, where you're gonna need a little uh, you know, a boat, gondola, thingamajigger? Okay, to answer your first question, we've been booking these properties like crazy so it's extremely lucrative two trimesters of the year i didn't tell you about the third trimester third trimester which is september to december it's usually not very good it's a good time to do repairs to your building do upgrades to your building um, you will still get people road crews go to florida and you can rent your houses to road crews they're usually rough on them, but uh, you know, you live with that. Um, people have their parents down in Florida, so a lot of people go visit them in Thanksgiving and at Christmas time and at New Year's, right? So you'll get some bookings in the third trimester, but you're not gonna get anywhere near the money you get in the first and the second. The first and the second are, are fairly strong and you can do well. Uh, one of your problems that you might have, if, if let's just say that Brian decided to buy his first vacation rental. Brian would be the 6,001 vacation rental on Siesta Key. Everyone else has got there before you, right? So their houses are rented. They got reviews. They got professional pictures. There, there are... There's a history there online that people can read and they're comfortable with it. Your house has nothing, okay? But if you decide to buy a vacation rental, Brian, your new friend for life, Phil Falcone, will show you how to boost that um, privately. Not in front of this group, but I'll show you how to do it privately. There is a way to boost a new vacation rental and get some reviews and get some activity there's a way to do it, and it's not that difficult. So if any of you decide to buy a new vacation rental, I will help you with it. Anything else? Didn't you have a second question? What the heck was your second question? Oh, global warming? Oh, I'm ter terrified of that. I, I'm awake all night long thinking about it. There's one question online. <laughs> do you use a security deposit and how much for the rental? Uh, we used to collect a security deposit and then return it. Uh, pretty sure we don't do that anymore. We, we got bored with that. We decided to just boost the rent and keep the money. So we don't charge a, the security deposit became like a major problem. We're collecting all the security deposits and we got to return all the money. I'm getting all these phone calls all the time. You're already inundated with phone calls because people want to know every damn thing about Siesta Key. So you become somewhat of a travel agent, okay? And you need to know your area well before you can even, you know, help these people. They want to know where to rent a boat and how to do this and how to do that and what's the best restaurants. It's like, come on, dude. Like, uh, so you have to answer a lot of these kind of questions. And... Returning security deposits became a pain in the net. So I just said, to hell with it. Let's just bump the rental price up and keep the money. So that's what we did. Yes, Alex, do you have a question? Someone got a mic for Alex? Oh. 
going back to the security deposit. So, for example, that eighteen hundred dollar couch. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get that money back from the uh, renters? I just ate it. I just ate it. It was in, in the grand scheme of things. Understand, I've been down there since twenty twelve. So I've been down there a long time, right? Uh, the worst thing that happened was somebody destroyed the eighteen hundred dollar couch. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I probably lost two grand. I don't even care. Just you're too damn busy. You got all these. Other, I'm always looking for new properties to buy. I'm decorating properties. I'm I'm taking care of things all over. I got properties in PA. I got them in Florida. You, you have to, at some point, you have to decide what's important to you. I just didn't care. I just went out and bought another couch and had it delivered. And they took away the old one. Does Verbo do the security deposit thing or through them? Or uh, don't you have to report to Verbo if there's an issue and then they'll give you some money back if whatever, for example, if the couch, you say, hey, listen, the couch, $1,800 couch. Did they get that security deposit or no? They uh, don't deal with that security stuff? Uh, there was. I, w I wasn't collecting security deposits at the time that happened. So, that, okay. so I just said the hell with it. I mean, I think I lost two grand in, in 12 years. So it's not like I'm terrified of the problem. Uh, as far as there's really nothing down there that scares me. It's, I think it's one of the safest businesses you can be in because... You got somebody there who's walking right into your property five minutes after 11 o'clock, knocking on the door, right? I've had people who drive down there with pickup trucks. I know that because while I'm down in Siesta Key, I see pickup trucks in the driveway, and that can be a problem because sometimes they'll take your, they could take your refrigerator. Somebody stole a desk out of one of my most expensive properties. It was a nice desk, too. Somebody stole it. But I mean, it was maybe a $500 desk. I mean, what am I gonna do? Uh, I don't wanna spend my time chasing people down. I'm not gonna go to, go to court in Rhode Island to get a $500 desk back. I just could buy another desk. So that's the way I do it. You could do it any way you want. I just, I just rather just forget about it and, and keep running the business.